Hi YouTube, I'm Bruce Lawson, commissioning editor for Smashing TV at Smashing Magazine, and this is Kitterly, the Smashing Magazine mascot. Following now is a one hour, 20 minute webinar with Leonie Watson, who is uh, a blind screen reader user. And she's looking at some websites nominated by Smashing Magazine members to show you how the web sounds to a screen reader user. We decided that this was so important for the community to know that we're giving this away for free, but we run three like this every month. And if you're a Smashing member, you have access to them free. It's five or nine US dollars a month and you can cancel any time. Anyway, hope you enjoy. Awesome. Okay, you, you, you go and have a very brief lie down because of all the stress, but don't go <laughs> far. So, good afternoon, Smashing members. Apologies for that. Uh, we've had two rehearsals and as is the uh, the traditional case with technology, as soon as you go live, everything goes wrong. Um, I'm not entirely sure that we can blame Zoom for being particularly unscreen reader friendly. I think it's 16, more unbruce friendly, or I'm too stupid to be able to set it up myself. Um, but I'm delighted to be able to introduce you to, or reintroduce you to, Leonie Watson, who's an old friend of mine. We've known each other since ooh, 2000 and single digits when we were both uh, on the committee of the British Standards Institution uh, drafting the British Standard for Commissioning Accessible Websites and she's been trying to avoid me ever since but, uh, I keep on keep on sneaking up on her she um, you can't see her but I know that she has lavish and gorgeous purple hair which is why I'm wearing my magnificent shirt Leonie which is bright green <laughs> huge, huge circles on it and in those circles are flowers of purple orange yellow red um, and it's just the worst fabric in the world. Uh, there are times, you know, when I'm actually quite glad I can't see a thing. And it's, but it's but I, one of them. I know that you're able to smell glamour. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, Leonie, as you know, Smashing Members is going to ha take us through some sites, some of the ones that you've nominated uh, in a spirit of friendliness and helpfulness rather than trying to tell anybody off. And she's going to do my site as well, so um, I'm going to be brave and uh, learn a lot and show you how the web hears to a screen reader user. So uh, give it up for Leonie Watson. Hooray, Leonie. <laughs> Thanks, Bruce. And hello, everybody. As Bruce said, we're going to go on a bit of an adventure together. I'm going to take a look at some websites using my screen reader of uh, choice, which is still, I have to say, the JAWS screen reader mostly just because I've been using it for so long now, it's uh, very familiar to me and consequently very easy to use. We're gonna look at all sorts of different websites. Before we dive in though, I just want to take a couple of minutes to tell you something about the relationship between a screen reader, the browser and the code of the website. And it really is the code for the most part that screen readers are most interested in. What happens when the browser gets hold of an HTML document is that the browser passes that document and it does a whole bunch of stuff with it. It creates the document object model that we use particularly uh, when we're scripting functionality into the page. It creates a visual rendering of the document, the bit that most people see on screen. Uh, in some cases, it'll give some default styling to elements, uh, headings or form fields, for example, if you do nothing with them, will still have a, a visual design display on the page. And the browser also creates something called an accessibility tree. And it only does this if it detects that an assistive technology like a screen reader is running. The screen reader then comes along and grabs a whole bunch of information from that accessibility tree. That's all the accessibility information about the HTML that the document consists of. So as we go through this exploration together, every time you hear my screen reader say something about an element on the page, that's where the screen reader is getting the information from. It's going to the browser and saying, hey, this element, 
tell me all the accessibility information you've got about it. What is it? What's it for? What's it uh, got in the middle? What's its name? How do I refer to it? All of that kind of thing. So it really is a very close knit relationship between the browser and the screen reader that happens in order to make all of this work. So that said, let's make a start. So I did the sensible thing in all the technology. Alt -E, menu, application menu, and, show all. Uh, bookmarked a few websites. Type form, the intercept, survey, smashing, mass.gov, Bruce Lawson site, 914. Bruce first, since he very bravely volunteered his website. Enter, so. leaving menus, about land, oh. land, Bruce Lawson's personal site, Mozilla Firefox, Bruce Lawson's personal site, 27 regions, 21 headings and 187 links, Bruce Lawson's personal site, visited heading level one link, Bruce Lawson's Lawson's. So I'm going to stop that there. First thing you learn when you've got a screen reader is the key to stop it talking. There is only so much talking in your ear you can cope with during the course of the day. And in most screen readers, the control key is what will stop it talking. What you heard then was the screen reader do several things as the page loaded. It told me the title of the site, Bruce Lawson's personal site. That's the bit that's contained in the title element inside uh, the head elements on the page. These days, I understand in, in the visual appearance of browsers, that's not a very visible piece of information. Back in the day when I last saw a browser, uh, the title was very often displayed quite prominently at the top of the browser window. But for a screen reader user, it's still the first piece of information that you encounter on the page. And it's incredibly useful because it's often the first guarantee or first confirmation that you've got that you've ended up on the page that you intended to reach. You might also have heard that the screen reader then just gave a quick summary of some of the key elements on the page. It told me there were some regions on the page and some headings. So already that's given me a bit of a clue as to how I can start exploring this page. One thing you can't do as a blind screen reader user is take in the page at a whole glance. Uh, when most sighted people look at a page, they'll kind of notice, yep, yeah, I can see the header and the footer and maybe the navigation off to one side and a content area somewhere. But of course you can't do that sort of holistic assessment of a page as a screen reader user. What you can do though is use the regions of a page. So uh, in JAWS, if I hit the R key, we'll start to explore the page in regional chunks like this. Navigation region. So it tells me there's a navigation region on the page and if I hit that key again. Search this site clickable search region. I've got a, a search region on the page. Main region. A main region which uh, tells me all things being cool, that's the main uh, content area of the page. Heading level two, link reading list, banner. Uh, and then I come to uh, a banner area, so something that's using the alert. Laura Katz has left the meeting. And posted going. in content information. Uh, some content information, so uh, that's the uh, the footer there. And we can keep going through the page uh, like this to find the different sort of chunks. And all this is picked up. Uh, probably by the use of the HTML5 sectioning elements, header, footer, nav, main, or it could possibly be because Bruce is using uh, the ARIA role equivalent, uh, role equals banner, role equals content info for footer, role equals main, role equals navigation. It's but the, the element. Other, it's the element, is it good? Yeah. So that's by far the best way to do it is a uh, nice, simple, accessible HTML. Uh, but in doing so, in that one shortcut, I can move from big chunk of the page to the next. And it starts to give me a sense of the whole, the whole page, as in the, the key blocks that make it up. Bruce Lawson. So if I go back to the top of the page, uh, another exploration strategy I've got is to use headings. And this is really common amongst a lot of screen readers. So what I'm going to do is combine the two. I'm going to use the, the, the region shortcut to go back to that main content area of the page. Visited heading level one link Bruce Lawson's personal site. Dan navigation region. Search this site clickable main region. So we are back to the top of the main region. Now I remember that the summary my screen reader gave me when the page first loaded told me that there were some headings available. So now I'm going to use another shortcut H. And again, this is pretty common to, to all screen readers to start using headings as a way of navigating through the page. So if I hit H the first time. Reading list heading level two link. I get a reading list. Uh, am I interested in Bruce? No, I'm not interested there. So I'm going to keep going. On smart TV. Yes, heading level two link. Oh, 
on smart TVs. That sounds quite interesting, but I'll keep going just for the sake of exploration. Reading list heading level two link. Uh, another reading list. Reading list heading level two link. Another reading list. Reading list heading level two link. Gosh, Bruce, you're a busy reading person. The practical value of semantic HTML uh, heading level two link. This looks like my kind of thing, the practical value of semantic HTML. So uh, I've been able to explore through the page using a couple of just very simple strategies that's helped me move to the main area of the page because that seemed like a good place to start. And then to use headings to skim down the list of Bruce's articles. Uh, and now I found one I'm interested in. I can hit enter. enter. Main region, article region, the practical value of semantic Intrigue. HTML okay. heading level two link. Permanent link to the practical value of semantic HTML. Bruce Lawson's personal site, the practical value of semantic HTML, Mozilla Firefox. For so again, then we got the title uh, read out uh, just before the name of the browser. And again, it's got that confirmation that I've used uh, or hit the link and, and been successfully taken to the place I wanted to go. So um, yeah, full kudos to, to Bruce for using lots of nice HTML touches that make my experience as a screen reader user, you know, nice and easy for navigating around and finding content. Things sadly are not always quite this easy. Uh, um, one of my uh, platforms I love to hate at the moment uh, is Typeform. Alt B menu so application type form 14 of 14. Enter leaving menu www.brucelawson.co.uk.28. The practical value of semantic HTML. Bruce Lawson. Um, we got some. I came across this website when the lovely people at Smashing Magazine sent me an email not long ago to say it's our first birthday as a membership organization and we'd like to send you some swag. Woohoo, I thought, and headed over to the form they asked me to complete. Unfortunately, uh, they chosen to use Typeform, as a lot of people do. It's a very convenient platform to use for creating all sorts of forms and other bits and pieces. But this is why it's a problem from my point of view. Uh, this time, I'm going to bypass uh, those two strategies I mentioned before, and I'm just going to use uh, a very blunt instrument. I'm going to use the down arrow key, and this just literally means I'm going to explore the website one line of information at a time. It's a bit painstaking, uh, but it's a very thorough way of finding out what's available on the page. So here we go. Blank. Got a blank line. Heading level one, we are celebrating one year all aboard the Smashing membership and have a little gift for you. Excellent. Heading level one, that bodes really well. Nice heading one at the top of the page. The most important heading level tells me uh, I'm in the right place uh, and we mean business. So let's keep going. Start button. Oh, there's a start button. Sounds like I should probably just hit that, but I'll just keep going just to make sure. Press enter. Oh, then it says press enter. Okay, should I press enter on the start button or is that just a general instruction that they've put floating near the button? Who knows? We'll keep going just to be sure. Blank. Okay. Heading level one done check mark. Oh, then we've got another heading one. Done. Now I'm guessing at this point you can't see this on screen if you happen to be looking. But from my point of view, when I got to this page, I was like, I'm done already. Wow. Damn, these guys at Smashing Magazine are good. Heading level one, thank you for your kind support. M dash it lets us produce great content, pay all our contributors at. fairly, and reduce advertising on the site. It was a piece of information that is only visually displayed at the conclusion of filling out the form. Uh, unfortunately, due to the way that Typeform does things, these messages are not hidden in a way that hides them from screen reader users. They're hidden visually, but that's it. So uh, I was already quite confused. I had a start button and quite clearly a finish message. Um, and yeah, that was pretty much where the rocks. Heading in. level one, we'll let you know in early December when your goodies start sailing out to you. Heading level one, you can close this tab now. Excellent. And the other thing I noticed was lots of heading ones. All of this text is in heading level one. So there's no sense of whether one heading is more important than the other, whether all that text is combined into one single heading just broken over several lines. So it's all a little bit of a mess. Anyway, we can go back to the top and I'll, start I'll do the logical thing. I'll hit the start button. Enter. Main region. What's your full name? Edit. What's your full name? Edit. So here things got mostly uh, a little bit easier. I, I could type in my full name. Uh, that was quite easy to do. If I tab What's through, your email? I Edit. could enter my email. Keep tabbing through. One t-shirt. Um, and then it asked me, what did I want? Uh, did I want a t-shirt? Submit button. Oh no, okay, so let's go back to that. Main region, one t-shirt. One t-shirt. Now to me, and to my screen reader, that just sounds like a piece of plain text. There's no indication that it's a link, or a form field, 
some form of radio button or checkbox. Hey. Uh, so no indication that actually that piece of information is interactive other than the fact that by logical deduction based on the text, it's asking me to make a selection between it and something else. At this point, um, I had to give up, I must confess, and uh, call on my friends at Smashing Magazine who very kindly and blushingly uh, acknowledged that this was not a great platform to be using, uh, switched over to uh, another platform and all was well and I can happily say I have got my swag and it is safely sitting on my desk for all to see. So making sure that content is hidden properly when you need it to be hidden is incredibly important. Um, that uh, done message that appeared to me, but not to everyone else, at completely the wrong time and in completely the wrong place, was incredibly confusing. Um, so it's not just good enough to hide something visually. Um, you've got to tuck it away good and proper. Good techniques for doing that are display none in CSS or the HTML hidden attribute. Both of those will hide content pretty much from uh, everybody and anybody. So um, yeah, it's something else that's very important to do. Okay, let's go and have a look at another example. Alt-D. XXL extra XMM. Escape. Escape. Type your Alt-D menu app type form. The intercept. Sur- survey look. money. Smashing magazine. Mass.gov. And Bruce Lawson. BBC technology. Data for the enter. Leaving menus. Website. Leave page button. Uh, the BBC does a fantastic job at uh, accessibility. Uh, they've had a, a lot of practice of it, and they've got very good internal standards. Stay on page button. Ooh. Leave page there enter. And uh, BBC news, Mozilla, Firefox. a lot of the BBC websites are, are very easy to Te- navigate, despite the fact that they've got an awful lot of content on them. Technology BBC News. Okay, so Technology BBC News, again, that title is is really useful. Uh, I'm going to use the down arrow technique again just to explore for a little while because uh, it gives us access to some more information. Blank. Heading level two, we've updated our privacy and cookies so policy. Privacy and cookies. Blank. Okay. We've made some important changes to our privacy and cookies policy and blank. List of two items. Okay, button. Okay, we'll go with that. Enter. I trust the BBC. Whether I should or not, we shall. Maybe never find out, but we'll go with it for yes, now. Yes, I agree button. And Enter. yes, I agree. So this is an interesting situation with a screen reader user. Visited when link you letter. get things that pop up and present themselves to you, screen readers aren't always terribly good at, at letting you know they're there. Uh, it wasn't until I hit the, the key then to move down a line that I noticed there was a yes, agree button. Um, and, and so you do get used to it as a screen reader user, that you find content has unexpectedly appeared without you being aware of it until you started interacting with it. Um, but uh, yeah, that's something that's uh, an interesting problem. Link sport. Well, let's keep going anyway. Uh, we can find visited link weather. Sport weather. Link I player. I link player. sounds. Same page link more. Uh, and we've got a same page link there for more if we wanted. List end. And shall I go back and explore that? Because same page link same more. Same page link more. Uh, same page link is, is how screen readers uh, mostly identify uh, an internal link. So something like a skip link or a, a link that will lead somewhere else on the same page. This is an interesting one because based on the fact that it says more, I actually would expect it to disclose some content, to pop up some more content when I activate it, not move me to another part on the page. So let's hit enter on it and see what happens. Enter, same page, link more, BBC banner region, BBC navigation region, more, BBC food, business, earth arts, make it digital, taster, local, Ooh, tomorrow's world, okay. TV, radio, heading level one, more, BBC. That's interesting. I have no idea what happened then. Let's see. Technology, BBC News, Mozilla, okay, Firefox, so BBC, Banner, who, more. I just used a command to say to my screen reader, tell me what the title of the page is. And it seems I'm still on the same page based on the title. Uh, let's see, if I point up. Blank. Search the BBC button. Blank. Heading level two more. List of 12 okay, items. Okay, so it did place me somewhere with some more content. Link CBBC. So Link perhaps CBBC. I was wrong. It did just take me Link to food. another Part Link bit size. Link earth. Link arts. Links. Link make it digital. Link taster. Link but local. You can see, I'm not entirely certain about that. There's, there's uncertainty in my voice. So what I'm going to do is just use headings. More so heading level there two. There was a more heading where I'd been taken on the page. Accessibility links heading level. Wrapping to bottom. Oh. Explore the BBC heading level two. So using headings. To Are you a Sharon? Heading level three link. Techno- accessibility links heading level two. That I know is near the top of the page, that accessibility heading. More heading level two. So the more has opened, I think. Blank. 
Search the BBC edit. Search the search the BB list at same link sounds. Link I player. Visited link well, link I link sounds. Same page link more use JAWS key plus alt plus ah, M to so move the okay. control so element. That more link actually did take me to another point on the page. It skipped over. List end. BBC navigation region end. Search the BBC search. clickable. Search the, the B edit. Search the BB blank. Heading level two more. Information was already visible on the screen or not. List of twelve items. I guess from my point of view, it probably doesn't matter too much. So either way, I will continue exploring. Uh, I'll bypass that list of twelve items. Although it is worth noting that this is one of the good things about list markup in HTML, is that the browser does lots of lovely things. It will tell you what sort of list it is. It'll tell you the difference between just a straightforward ordered list, uh, unordered list and an ordered one. And it'll also count up the number of list items inside it and make that information available to the screen reader. So when I come across a list, heading level two more, list of 12 items. I automatically get told how many items there are in it. Uh, and that helps me make a, a decision about whether I want to just keep uh, using the arrow key to navigate through one line at a time, or whether I maybe just want to use another shortcut to navigate straight past it. And I don't fancy wading through 12 uh, items in a list of anything, so I'm going to use headings to keep jumping through the page. BBC News Navigation Heading Level 2. Uh, so we've got a navigation block there, which is good, but I don't think we want that. Technology Heading Level 1. And then one. we get to Technology Heading Level 1. So again, this Heading 1 is a great indication that I'm at the start of the, the interesting part of the page, the main content area. Top Stories Heading Level 2 Clickable. Some uh, top stories there. Children smartwatch recalled over data fears heading level three link. Uh, and then as we get down into the heading three, as we start to see the actual headlines. Related content heading level four. In this case, it's uh, some related content. Crypto exchange founders death locks dollar 140M heading level three link visited. And so we've got a very uh, easy way, again, of just using those very same simple techniques for just navigating through content. Blank. Court documents say Canadian cryptocurrency then, exchange Quadrica cannot access or secure the coins. Uh, I can just drill down and find out a little bit more about that news headline. Blank. List of two items. 4 February 2019. From the section. Link US and Canada. Uh, and a bit more sort of meta information. So again, this is for the most part really nicely structured. It's using headings and lists and pretty clear link text for the most part, um, you know, to help me make decisions about where I want to explore. Uh, I know uh, one of you had sent in a specific request to have me go and explore the mass.gov website uh, in the US. So I'm going to try that one next because I did sneak a little bit of a, a, a look earlier just to get a sense of the homepage of it. Alt menu, application menu, show up, type form, 14 of the intercept, survey, smash it, mass.gov, enter, leaving menus, www.bbc.co.news.technology, more. Mass.gov. Okay, so we've reached the mass.gov website. Now, the person who got in touch ahead of the webinar uh, wondered if I would be able to find any information about uh, claiming uh, an unemployment benefit or, or getting some information uh, about unemployment. So, uh, as I said, I sneaked a quick look at the homepage just to get a sense of it. And uh, I came across uh, the navigation block. Main navigation heading level so two. So that was one heading shortcut jump, and I got straight to the navigation. So, so far I was feeling quietly confident. Because I want to navigate, I'm going to use the down arrow just to explore this bit in more detail now. List of five items. So we've got a list of five items. That's really good news. I know what sort of size and shape navigation I'm dealing with. Living button menu collapsed. And I've got a, a living button menu collapsed. Now there's lots of information in there. And the bit that confused me with this is that it says menu. Typically, when I encounter something that tells me it's a menu, uh, I tend to think it's going to behave like the menu in software. Uh, that's what the uh, design pattern for, for a web menu is intended to be like. Uh, if you're not familiar with the keyboard interaction for one of those, it means that you can uh, open the menu and then use your arrow keys to navigate left or right along the horizontal sort of uh, menu options, or if you want to drill down into uh, one of the child level menus for any of them, uh, you can use the down arrow and, and keep navigating like that. So, so to hear a uh, button and menu and collapsed didn't quite seem to, to gel in my head. So the first thing I tried when I was exploring earlier was I came 
back out of that to the top of the list. List of five items. And I tried tabbing onto that. So that thwacking noise you can hear tells me that my screen reader has switched itself into applications mode. This is a very peculiar mode that uh, screen readers switch into uh, when the design pattern uses particular pieces of the ARIA specification. So many of you, if you've ever tested with a screen reader, will know that when you tab into a form field and you begin typing, the screen reader will let you type the characters into the uh, form field and it won't use those characters to execute shortcuts. So if you hit H, for example, you'll see the H key appear in the text box. You won't suddenly try and find your screen reader is jumping to the next heading. Applications mode is pretty much the same thing except that instead of you being able to type into something like a form field, it says to your screen reader, don't make any of your shortcuts available. None of your navigation keys, uh, none of the typical ways that your user would uh, instruct the, the software to move you around the page. Instead, let the browser and the web page take care of all the interaction, all the navigation for you. So that thwacking noise tells me that my screen reader has now given up pretty much all its navigational control in order to let the website and the browser take care of it for me. The problem I've got is that I didn't hear my screen reader say anything after the thwacking noise. It didn't say living button or anything of the sort. Uh, I just heard that noise to let me know that uh, the mode had changed. So curiosity being what it is, I will keep exploring, but I'll use the arrow keys because that's what I'd expect to be able to do to interact with a menu except nothing much is happening. I'm hitting the, the up and down, the left and right arrow keys, but from my point of view, all is eerily silent. Escape. So I can hit the escape key to come back out Mask. of that. Gov. Same page link, skip the main living button menu and collapsed. And we'll go back there. So uh, I'm gonna keep going through the navigation just, just for interest and see if I can find anything about. Uh, Health and social services menu. Families and, and children again, menu. Uh, I've, I've switched it out of the applications mode and I've gone back to uh, the previous ways of navigating. I'm just using and property menu. down arrows. Transportation menu, legal and justice menu, public safety menu, energy menu, environment menu, taxes menu, unclaimed proper vital and public records, voting menu, living menu, working button menu, business resources menu, okay. working button menu collapsed. Maybe that will tell me something about unemployment. Business resources menu, going, just in case. professional licenses and unemployment menu. Oh, unemployment. That looks more like the challenge I was set. So I will try hitting enter on it. Enter, main region. Uh, and again, we heard that thwacking noise that tells me that, that my screen reader has, has given over control of navigation to the website. Um, but A, M, heading level one, welcome to Massachusetts. Main region, heading level one, welcome to Massachusetts. What would you like to do? <laughs> what would I like to do? That's a very good question. Okay, so I'm not sure what's happened to uh, to everything there. Let's query the title of the page. Mass.gov Mozilla Firefox, main region, okay. 2. Welcome to Massachusetts. Still seem to be on the home page, but if I ask the screen reader to tell me what thing am I currently focused on? What would you like to do? It's not on the menu where I left it, so I'm slightly unsure now as to where I am. So we'll go back to the old heading strategy for trying to figure things out. Popular searches heading level three. Popular searches. So I'm guessing that's further down the page than I was. So I'll reverse order. So shift H will take me back through the headings in, in reverse order. Welcome to Massachusetts heading main navigation heading level two. Okay. Yeah. So, so for some reason, trying to uh, access the unemployment bit of the menu, uh, for some reason, kicked me out of the menu and, and put my focus somewhere on the page. Welcome to Massachusetts heading level one. So I think at that point, I'm probably going to call it quits on trying to find the piece of information. Um, the important thing there is that I wanted to demonstrate how that, that menu, um, or the thing that, that said it was a menu, um, actually was quite confusing. It, it gave me the wrong cue in terms of what my expectations were. Um, and, and when I did experiment with sort of interacting with it, um, I wasn't entirely sure that it was you know, doing anything expected. If I really was needing to find information about this right now, um, I would probably uh, use a completely different tactic, and that's just to use the, the search field to, to try and find something specific on the website relating to, to my query. Um, 
I'm not a patient person, it has to be said, and uh, sometimes you just need to default to uh, more tried and trusted ways of, of getting to information than patiently working through uh, some navigations and other bits and pieces. I have a question, Leone. Mm. Um, is that the, the, what you call the thwacking noise? Is <laughs> that, uh, I, I assumed it was thwacking and not any... Uh, Yes. <laughs> no, oh, that no. fucking noise again. Um, is that because uh, there's an ARIA role application there, or is that one of the things that would make it happen? Yes. Yeah, so, so the ARIA role of application is uh, the uh, the obvious role that causes that, but there are several others that, that have the same effect. Um, things like uh, the role of menu, menu bar, progress bar, toolbar. Uh, tab list, all of those, if, if you're using any of those ARIA roles, uh, that's a really clear sign that you need to provide the uh, keyboard interaction through your JavaScript, uh, in able to, to support both screen reader users, keyboard users, uh, and everybody else. So yeah, it's, it's almost certainly down to an ARIA role in there that's kicking the screen reader into that mode, but uh, not necessarily then providing the supporting keyboard interaction that's needed to make it really work. Gotcha. So w when earlier you um, you gave me a pat on my charming head uh, because I was using <laughs> HTML elements <clears throat> mm -hmm. rather than ARIA roles, I suppose it, it is it generally the case that if you can use an HTML element rather than bolting on roles, you should do so? Yeah, absolutely. Um, HTML wherever and whenever you can. Um, there are often good cases uh, when that isn't possible. Tabs and pan tab panels are a really good example. Um, if you want to produce something like that, there are no HTML elements that, that do the job. So using the ARIA um, is, is a good approach. Occasionally, uh, it can be useful uh, for any of you still needing to support Internet Explorer, for example, uh, Internet Explorer's accessibility support for the HTML5 sectioning elements like header and footer. Um, is pretty weak. Uh, its support for the ARIA equivalent roles is much better. So uh, there are very rare now cases where often, uh, even if you are using the, the HTML5 elements, you might find a, a, a good case for, for using ARIA. Um, but yeah, i.e. being on the kind of the, the sunset march now, um, that's getting less and less of a, a, a consideration all the time. And a quick meta question. Would you mind, mm. uh, could you turn your screen reader down slightly? Because when you and he are talking, you're being masked a little bit. Uh, when you're talking together. That's a very good point. Not easily, so I will endeavour not to. Or just yell at the top of it. your voice. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Thank okay. you. I'm going to mute myself again while you continue. While you're there, please do keep an eye out for any questions for me, will you, Bruce? <laughs> I am. It's just like, why, why is Bruce's shirt so great? Uh, it's, no, it's, uh, <laughs> Damien asks, is it just because of the keyboard interactions to map that you are giving the advice to not use ARIA? Is there any other impact when you're using ARIA roles? Um, ARIA, using ARIA is a bit like using spices and seasoning when you're cooking used lightly and well, it's extremely effective. Overused and overdone, it can often cause more problems than the ones you're trying to solve. Um, HTML gives you a whole bunch of accessibility for free, is the first thing. Um, so as soon as you start adding ARIA into it, particularly where you don't need to, you're starting to add moving parts to your code. And the more moving parts you've got, the more fragile it becomes. Uh, and it's a death of a thousand paper cuts kind of a situation. You know, a little bit of ARIA here and there is not going to cause you major fragility in your code. But uh, I have seen websites that were actually perfectly accessible. And then someone very helpfully added a lot of ARIA on top of it and in doing so managed to make them completely inaccessible. So it's just keeping things simple is just good coding practice, irrespective of accessibility. So I think there's, there's an element of, of that involved. Um, and then just being very, very sure that ARIA is invisible. So when you're, you're writing code, uh, unless you're testing it with a screen reader, uh, quite a lot can be happening without you being aware of it. So if you are using ARIA, you really do need to test it with a screen reader because quite often 
there'll be unintended consequences that you're just not aware of from a development point of view. That, that mirrors the advice that uh, I used to give my uh, good Romanian children when I was consulting with them. And I'd say, if you're going to use ARIA to uh, add keyboard accessibility to things that don't really have oh. an HTML element, you must mm -hmm. test it with the keyboard mm -hmm. to make sure it works, because yeah. otherwise you just don't know. So that, that's one thing that's probably worth just pointing out is that ARIA in and of itself is a very screen reader specific technology. A tiny amount of it is recognized by Dragon naturally speaking, but, that, but other than that, it, it's all about screen reader accessibility. Uh, and ARIA itself doesn't impose any kind of functionality at all. This is why the problem with the, the menus I was talking about earlier. So ARIA just changes the way something's presented in the accessibility tree that the browser creates. Uh, all the functionality that needs to be accorded the design pattern, that's down to us as developers to put into the JavaScript. So yeah, you've got to make sure that if you're using ARIA, you back it up with the right keyboard interaction in your script. And yeah, exactly as you said, that, that you test it pretty thoroughly, keyboard screen reader as well. And it, it's probably worth saying at this point to everybody that um, you are what I would consider an advanced screen reader user. You've been using them for donkey's years and, and you're a web developer too. So mm -hmm. a lot, a lo maybe somebody who's newly lost their vision is going to be a lot less adept at navigating the sites than you are simply because you have more experience and probably more idea of what's going on under the hood because it's your, you know, it's your training and your job. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, I mean, although all I have really used today are some very simple techniques that, that many screen reader users uh, will adopt. Uh, there are some people who, who never get past just using the down arrow key to explore the page and read it effectively like a text document. Um, uh, there's a, a, a thesis just published by uh, Vasilis van Femmet, um, here from Amsterdam's University of Applied Sciences, uh, in which he has done a lot of research uh, with screen reader users amongst other people. And he talks to one person who actually finds all the information about headings and lists clutter. They really hate it. They would like their screen reader not to tell them <laughs> about all these, you know, lovely features that the web page has got because they just find it noisy and, and distracting. So yes, you, you shouldn't take me as a, a typical user. There probably is no such thing as a typical user, of course, but uh, it's the same with browsers, isn't it? I mean, some people love the minimal UI of Chrome. Other people absolutely adored the endless bells and whistles that we had in um, From Opera Damien. 12. Mm -hmm. you know, there, there's no browser user. I've just noticed some, some more questions come in, and they're coming in thick and fast, Leonie. So I, I, if, if it's okay with you, I'll ask them now. Mm, please do. Uh, are there any other screen readers that you recommend other than JAWS for testing? Yes, as many as you can possibly get your hands on and have time to test. So um, actually on Windows, I recommend testing with NVDA. Uh, for the moment, it's uh, an excellent open source screen reader. Um, and uh, from a budget point of view, uh, that makes it uh, a more effective tool in your arsenal. Um, I won't make a side-by-side -side comparison between it and JAWS, but they are pretty comparable in terms of uh, you know, screen reader experience. So uh, testing with NVDA on Windows is uh, a good combination. If you're testing on a Mac, then VoiceOver is your only choice. Um, it's the integrated screen reader on Mac OS and iOS. Um, and it's the only screen reader available on, on those particular platforms. Uh, if you're testing on Android, then TalkBack is the screen reader of choice. Um, circling back to Windows, Narrator uh, is the integrated screen reader in Windows. Uh, for many years, uh, it, was, it was the screen reader that almost was. Um, it was... Uh, lacked in features for many years. It was pretty terrible. But actually, in the past two years, uh, pretty much since the advent of, of Windows 10, uh, Narrator has actually uh, become a fully-fledged screen reader. And that's actually one Hello, I dip into me. every now and again um, when I need to get around some bits of Windows 10 that neither JAWS nor NVDA get to. 
The one thing I will point out from the uh, question about JAWS, uh, another screen reader to test on Windows, is that JAWS still has the market share um, by a reasonably distinct margin. So uh, sooner or later, it is always worth testing with the, the technologies that are, are likely to encompass the most of your screen reader audience. Um, but yeah, uh, trying to get in as, as, as many variations on a flavor of screen reader and browser as you can is, is a good idea. And, and follow up to that, uh, Mike asks, what's the best way for sighted developers to test with a screen reader? It seems <laughs> even for a well-intentioned developer, it's too easy to cheat as you've got the context of the visual page. I mean, I've just, I've just always said to somebody, get somebody else who's kind of on your team and turn the monitor off and unplug the mouse. Yeah, absolutely. You know, just stick a tea towel or a piece of paper or something over your laptop screen or yep, unplug it if you've got a desktop monitor. Uh, one feature I, I love about uh, Narrator on Windows 10 is that it has a dev mode. So if you uh, turn Narrator on, there is a keystroke which completely escapes me for the moment, which will black out everything on the screen except for the one piece of content that the screen reader is currently focused on. Mm -hmm. So it creates a sort of visual representation. So, so you can't cheat uh, quite as well. So that's a great feature, I think, that's, that's incredibly useful from a development point of view. Interesting. And Jean or Jean Kaplansky, uh, I will pass your message on to Leonie uh, after this but um, in a few weeks time uh, we're gonna release this video on YouTube for everybody to watch because I think it's really important for the wider dev community to understand what Leon is showing so um, the mass.gov people will be able to watch it there um, Oh, one new one just popped in why is your shirt so great Bruce <coughs> I'm <laughs> I am mainly using it, oh. that is the rotor thing on voiceover, do you know of it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Somebody said I'm mainly using it because it helps me with the page with my dyslexia and ADHD for long pieces of content, but do visually impaired use people use this? Oh, sorry. Yes. Mm, absolutely. So for anyone who's not familiar with it, on Apple devices, uh, you have something called the, the rotor. Uh, so called because on uh, its touch screen devices, you put a couple of fingers on the screen and you rotate them around as if you were twisting a wheel. Um, and what it does is it calls up uh, a kind of sort of tabbed style um, uh, display. And, and you can choose, uh, you know, one tab will have all the headings listed on the page, one tab will show all the links, one tab will show all the form fields, and then you can use the up and down arrows to just move very quickly to um, you know, the chosen link or the chosen form field that you want. And all screen readers have them, so if I show you now, uh, let's see if I'm... Links list dialogue, links list view, renew your vehicle registration, six of 37. So there, I've just called up a list. Now this just shows me all the links of the page. Uh, it said I'm on link six of 37, so I can just use the arrow key to move through this list. Apply for SNAP benefits food stamps, seven of 37. Renew your driver's license, eight of 37. So, so all screen readers uh, on all platforms have some variation on a theme of this capability. Give me a list of all the links, give me a list of all the headings. Uh, on the page, uh, and, and yes, uh, I certainly do use them myself, and I'm aware other screen reader users do use them. A quick note on the subject of of the links dialog, both in the the Apple Rotor and and other mechanisms like this. This is one of the reasons why accessibility people go on and on about link text needing to make sense when it's taken out of the context of the page. Um, if you took this page now and it was uh, you know, 16 apply now links or you know. Uh, read more links, it would be next to impossible to correctly identify where on earth you'd be going when you chose to activate a link. So this is one of the really clear use cases for making link text as, as useful and as, as independent in its own right as it can be. It occurs to me uh, I w when you were going through my site and it oh, maybe in uh, for the first time ever that although I've I'm always scrupulous about not saying click here, click here, click here. <laughs> My multiple use of the words reading list for actually different weeks worth of reading lists probably 
fails for the same reason that if you were just looking at, you know, if you're tabbing through and there's just 15 different reading lists, that's not terribly useful. Alert. Yep. Um, yeah. So maybe chucking in the date or something into the, the heading text or, or numbering them or some other thing would yep, make that a, a touch more usable for sure. I shall do it because I don't want you to come <laughs> around and punch me. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll shut up now and let you carry on because I know okay. we're taking lots of time. All right. Uh, I'm going to take have a look now uh, at the Smashing Mag website, it seems. Alt-B, menu, application, type, the enter, survey, Smashing Magazine, enter, leaving menus, www.mass.gov. Welcome to Massachusetts. Uh, and I'm going to choose an article that... Uh, I well, wrote regions. for Smashing Mag uh, uh, a few years ago now, but it seems like uh, a good place to start. So, Link design patterns. Oh, there we go. Just wait for the page to load. Accessibility APIs, a key to web accessibility, M Smashing Magazine. Uh, a useful topic because this is very much you know part of what we've been talking about accessibility apis are the way that the screen reader asks the browser for information uh, the thing i wanted to show you on this page uh, um, i hope the uh, smashing magazine team will forgive me uh, is sometimes the visual display of content makes complete sense and is very convenient and easy but the way it's presented to a screen reader user um, in the order of the code underneath isn't quite as convenient. So I'm going to hit uh, a, a shortcut that will take me straight to the number one heading on the page. Accessibility APIs, a key to web accessibility heading level one. Uh, and this is lovely. That's a, a nice piece of design, makes navigation very easy. What I'm going to do now is just let the screen reader read down the page. There's a command where you can just tell it, okay, just start reading and keep going until I tell you to stop because it's quite remarkable all the content that has to be read through um, before getting to the actual bones of the article. Heading level one accessibility AP is a key to web accessibility list of three items, 12 min red, link coding, link user experience, link accessibility, link API share on, link Twitter or link LinkedIn list end, link a post cat, sign up for our smashing newsletter, heading level two smashing newsletter, upgrade your inbox and get our editors picks twice a month, your email clickable required invalid entry edit subscribe right towards zero button, our friends and supporters downwards zero list of one items, link graphic v1 billion five hundred thirty one million two hundred ninety two thousand three hundred eighty two slash northwestern opt SSRFTX. Link earn your master's degree online. List end. Quick summary. Right word zero with loop web accessibility is about people. Successful web accessibility is about anticipating the different needs of all sorts of people, understanding your fellow web users and the different ways they consume information, empathizing with them and their sense of what is convenient and what frustratingly unnecessary barriers you could help them to avoid. Armed with this understanding, accessibility becomes a cold, hard technical challenge. A firm grasp of the technology is paramount to making informed decisions about accessible design. How do assistive technologies present a web application to make it accessible for their users. Where do they get the information they need? One of the keys is a technology known as the accessibility accessibility. So I'm going to stop it there um, and just head back up to that first accessibility. heading. Start the, uh, get the structure of the typical format of pages. Uh, there are techniques you can use to jump over it. Um, but visually, of course, you, you just sort of gloss over it, you glance through it, and, and you set to reading the article. Uh, but from a screen reader user's point of view, that's not quite so easy or convenient. So we had a lot of content to wade through. List of free items 12 minute read. 12 minute read. I'm always curious about these. Uh, not just on Smashing Mate, but, but any article that has a, a reading rate on it. I always feel slightly under pressure. Um, I'll show you before we wrap up how fast I usually listen to my screen reader at. Um, this is very slow for me. Um, but even so, 12 minutes to read this article. Uh, I, I'm always curious uh, who's 12 <laughs> minutes. Oh, we'll keep going. Uh, so then I had to get through some, some links about the, uh, the categories. Link user experience, link accessibility, link API, share on. Uh, and then some sharing links. Link Twitter or link LinkedIn, list end, link a post cat, sign up for our smashing newsletter. And then uh, uh, an invitation to sign up for the newsletter. Blank, heading level two smashing newsletter. Blank, upgrade your inbox and get our editor's picks twice a month. Blank, your email clickable, required invalid entry edit. Uh, something interesting there about the form field to put in your email. Uh, it says it's invalid 
although there is no information in the uh, the field yet, uh, that's a, a problem with the way some browsers uh, interpret the presence of the required field um, when there's no information in the field. They, in the accessibility layer, uh, in the accessibility tree, expose it as, as uh, having an error in it because by definition if something's required and it has no information in it uh, it is an error but it's not a particularly user-friendly way of presenting it but, uh, let's go on subscribe right words arrow button our friends and supporters downwards arrow and then there's some information about uh, friends and supporters list of one items Link traffic V1,531,292,382 no slash Northwestern opt SSRFTX. Sorry, uh, a graphic that has no uh, alternative text, which uh, I'm guessing is going to be a, a logo or, or, or something for that particular supporter. But that's very typical of the experience you get if images don't have a proper alt text provided. You just get some information about the file name or, or uh, path to the image. If you listen to Link this, uh, online. sorry, say again, Bruce. So listen to this. That's me actually punching the person who put that on. <laughs> you can all come and hunt me down later for for doing this, but uh... <laughs> no, thank you. I had, I had no idea. Blend. <laughs> Quick summary. Right get, zero with loop web accessibility is about people. Successful. Uh, we get to the quick summary, which is really useful. Except I left it reading when I I did this a moment ago because uh, it told me there was a quick summary, but then I wasn't quite sure where the quick summary ended, if it had ended, um, and if it had not ended. So I'm just going to very quickly just hit the down arrow key a few times and see if I can figure that out doing it this way. Your fellow web users and the different unnecessary barrier of the technology is accessible for their use application program at blank. Web accessibility is about people. Successful web accessibility is about anticipating the different... So I'm going to guess that that's the first line of the actual article. So we've exited the quick summary. But I just wanted to illustrate that even on a site like this, which actually has a lot of really good features for accessibility, um, I read a lot of content on the Smashing Mag website. There are some things that uh, unless you really think about the experience of using it with a screen reader probably just wouldn't occur to you or maybe even didn't you know crop up during usability testing it was just that all that information about sharing and you know come and join our, our our newsletter and and you know let's give a shout out to to some of the great people that support uh the work that smashing mag does it all adds to to a lot of clutter at the top of the page before you can really get to the thing you actually want to be doing, um, which is is reading the article. So this is where accessibility from a screen reading point of view falls more into a usability. There's nothing really stopping me accessing um, the content here, uh, but there is some stuff that maybe makes it a little bit less convenient than than I might choose to make it. Uh, I'm just going to quick time check, and Bruce, I'm sure you'll shout at me if we're seventeen oh eight. Do we need to wrap sometime soon, Bruce? I know we started late, but... Ten minutes? We could, yep. I mean, if it's okay with you, I'd love to have you on again <laughs> with any um, examples that uh, you still have, because I'm pretty sure that uh, lots of our people will have uh, things they'd like you to look at. But yeah, let's give it another ten. Okay, no problem in that. If that's okay with you. Of course it is. Uh... I know the pub's open now. <laughs> okay um what i'm going to do now is head over to uh my personal blog site because there's a couple of things there i can show you control l accessibility ap is a key i a k here you a enter web accessibility is about people successful web accessibility is about anticipating Take Lady Watson and dash on technology food and life in the digital age mozilla firefox okay so uh what I'm going to do now, and apologies if this makes everyone slightly sick, is I'm going to just move my focus straight down to the bottom of the page. RPM. Complimentary region, LinkedIn, L Watson link. Uh, and I'm going to go backwards up the page, and I'm going to use another shortcut, uh, B for buttons. Uh, this time I'm going backwards, so Shift B. Dark theme toggle button. Uh, and that uh, takes me to the first of two buttons that uh, let someone change the white on black to black on white or vice versa uh, and you might have heard when uh, the screen reader landed on it it said it was a toggle button if i go to uh, the one before it on the page 
Light theme toggle button pressed. It's a toggle button pressed. Uh, this is a, a good use of ARIA because the equivalent thing doesn't exist in HTML and that's uh, to indicate when a button is pressed. Uh, ARIA pressed true is what's causing this button to, to tell me that it's, it's already been pressed. Um, and that's a very useful thing to do. Toggle buttons are really hard. Um, play pause buttons are the notorious example. Um, I hit play um, and then the button appears to, to be pressed and, and then something starts playing, but then the label changes to pause. And I'm never quite sure whether the pause button means if I hit it, it'll pause or whether it's already paused. And if I hit it, it'll go back to play. Something like ARIA pressed is a really good way of just saying, keep the label the same, but indicating along with the visual design that this thing is, is pressed or, or not pressed. So that's one thing that's uh, very useful um, where ARIA does something HTML can't. Uh, if I keep going back up through the buttons on the page. Conferences button collapsed. So uh, there we've got a conferences button collapsed. Uh, and this is uh, another useful thing. Uh, the ARIA uh, expanded attribute will let you say whether something is expanded or collapsed on the page. Uh, if you want a, a good HTML alternative, uh, details and summary are the native HTML ways to create something that discloses content. Uh, with the exception of Edge, which doesn't support those elements at all in any way, shape or form, never mind accessibly. <clears throat> all the other browsers actually have really good accessibility support for details and summary. So uh, they're a good HTML way to create a, a disclosure widget. But if you can't do that or you've got a different situation, uh, ARIA expanded is a good way. And if I hit enter on that button. Enter navigation region conferences button use JAWS key plus alt plus M to move the controlled element expanded alert from Scott Prover to all panelists. That, Fantastic demo search box edit. Uh, now says that any. it's uh, expanded and I can list of eight that items. information. Conferences button expanded use JAWS enter collapse. Or just collapse it again and it tells me that that's collapsed. Something else uh, I'll quickly show you, and I'm going to just zip my focus back up to the very top of the page. I'm going to use the, the regions to move to the main area. Graphic UK banner, main region. Uh, and the way uh, I've put things together on my blog is I've used article elements to represent the, the different uh, headlines and short texts about each blog post. Uh, what I've done here is something again that you can't do with HTML. I've used the ARIA labeled by attribute to tie the article element to the text that is shown in the heading um, for the particular blog post. So as I move through the page using the, the region shortcut that we started off exploring right back at the very beginning of the webinar, uh, we should hear. Heading level two link using the ARIA related description attribute banner. So that's read a whole bunch of information. It ties it all into one. It's reading the article, the heading, and the text inside the heading all as a single unit. But I can navigate uh, by that, uh, and it reads all the information um, in one go. So it's just another way to navigate through the page by the article elements inside the main content area uh, and still hear the heading text read out. So I don't just hear article, article, article. Uh, I'm hearing something that makes them uh, more context uh, relevant to me as I keep navigating through. Okay, let's see, where else can we go and explore? Let's have a look. What else I saved in my bookmarks? Alt B menu app type form 14 the intercept 13 or ah, 14. A new site. Enter leaving menus using the ARIA related description attribute heading level two link the intercept Mozilla Firefox list one region eleven headings and forty six links. The, uh, so I think this one was uh, sent in as a suggestion by someone. Uh, the intercept news site. This is not a site I am familiar with at all. Uh, so uh, again, I will stick by the, the trusty standbys of, of using the headings to navigate. If I can find my keys. Louisiana tests the new Supreme Court on abortion heading level one link. Okay, so there's a heading one. So because that's a heading one, I would almost expect that to be the uh, primary news article, the primary content of the page. But knowing this is a news site and I've gone to the homepage of the news site, I'm suspecting uh, this is not the case, so I'll keep exploring headings. Top stories heading level two. 
uh, top story is heading two. So that suggests the top story is a slightly less important than the headline I just read that was a heading level one, but I'll keep going. Top Nancy Pelosi 8 privately tells insurance executives not to worry about Democrats pushing Medicare for all heading level four link. And then I've got a heading four. So now I'm completely confused. Maybe that's a top story, but the top story heading said it was a heading two and this is a heading four. So no, maybe, maybe not. Google hired gig economy workers to improve artificial intelligence and controversial drone targeting project heading level four link. Uh, okay, so that's another heading four. And what I'm starting to suspect here is, is that headings have been used as much for their visual appearance uh, as they have for their actual semantic value to, to the likes of, of me and other screen reader users. Um, but it's a good illustration, as it turns out, of, of why it's pretty critically important to get heading structure right. It really is invaluable to screen reader users. Uh, and when it goes wrong, it's very, very hard to, to unpick uh, and make any sense of. Neil Mirau nominee to replace Brett Kavanaugh, heads agency that's installing sexual harassment guidance heading level four link. Okay, uh, let's see. I'm going to just try tabbing through the page now as a different way of exploring and see if that throws up anything of interest. Killis, Turkey, March 1st. The town of Killis is seen through the window of the new Umbadevi Mosque on March 1st, 2016. And Killis, Turkey, Killis, a city located just 10 km from. Okay. Stop that reading. One thing you will discover um, if you spend any time with a screen reader user is that we don't stop and listen to everything. Uh, it, it, it's one of the strange things I, I often find people believe or, or assume that, that a screen reader will listen to everything that is presented to them on Alert the page. From the uh, most of us, me in particular anyway, uh, are incredibly impatient um, and we won't sit and listen to everything. We'll, we'll listen to the first one or two syllables of a line and if it doesn't seem to be heading in the right direction to be the thing that we're interested in, we'll move on pretty rapidly. It's kind of the equivalent of uh, when you're skimming through content, you don't really read it properly. You maybe take in the shape of the words or the first few words in a sentence, just enough to give you a flavor of whether it's, uh, it's looking likely or not. And then if it isn't, you move on um, and so on. So screen readers are very much the same. So uh, yeah, we don't often hang around and, and listen to everything. See all on right words arrow link. Epilogue. Unanswered questions. Listen. Is it time for Kamala Harris to write Murderville Link? Oh, Murderville. Sounds interesting. Findersup.com link graphic. Ooh. No idea what that was. Some things with screen readers, it has to be said, are just often unpronounceable. Uh, what you can do, actually, is um, with screen readers uh, is not only just read content in whole discrete chunks like words or links or headings, you can actually read uh, by character. So if I use the left and right arrows now, uh, if I hit the right arrow. H-E-I-N-T-E-R-C-E-P-T -E -E period C-O-M. Uh, I could just read that right. URL by uh, character. And uh, this particular screen reader, if I stay paused on a particular character, will also give me the uh, phonetic alphabet uh, version of the letter as well, which is strange, but often quite useful. Uh, we can also navigate content by uh, words. So if I hold down a modifier key and use the right arrow. Join our newsletter original reporting. Uh, I can start moving uh, by, by word as well. And screen readers have hundreds of these commands. You can move by character, by sentence, paragraph, word. Um, almost every HTML element that exists has got a shortcut key. Um, uh, so whether it's tables, links, lists, buttons, um, uh, you know, there are shortcuts that will, will let you navigate around them. Okay, let's see uh, if we've got a couple of minutes. I'm just going to, having mentioned tables. Please do. Show you an example if I can think of where I can find one. Okay. Control L, the intercept Mozilla O, C, A, D, O, period, C, O, M, enter. Findersup.com link graphic, Akado, the online supermarket, Mozilla Firefox, an award for something and supermarket website, Akado. because I have no edit boxes, one frame, find the product edit, enter, find the product edit, uh, see a product that's likely to have nutritional information on the side of it, P -A -A -E -D -B -A -S. enter, I was going to say Prosecco, <laughs> Mozilla Firefox, I did think about tequila, login link, me, but, uh... <laughs> link reg, zero pounds, Okay, let's see if we... No can. selectable aria can. Essential waitress. 
Essential waitress S, 470G heading level 4, essential waitress steak cut, no. mm -hmm. combo box, favorites first. Heinz baked beans and tomato sauce 4X, 415G heading level 4, link. Enter. Heinz, that looks like a good choice. Featured suitable for vegetarians, Heinz baked beans and tomato sauce 4X, 415 G, 2 pounds, 2 pounds and 7. Oh, okay, we're going to stop that talking and... Oh. 5 frames, 45. Cool. No more headings at level 6. And 4 columns and 12 rows. Column 1, row 1, typical values. Okay, so uh, there I just used T, which is the shortcut to get you to a table. It told me I had 4 columns and a number of rows, and that the, the, the first cell in the first... Uh, column was typical values. Uh, so I'm going to use the screen reader's shortcuts for navigating through a table. In this case, it's holding down control and alt and using the left and right arrows will move me horizontally across the table. So if I move right. Per 100G, column two. Per one slash two can, column three. Uh, so it tells me which column I'm moving into and it reads the, the, the content of that cell. Percent right star, column four. Okay, so that's useful. So if I now keep those keys held down, the control and the alt, but I move, uh, use the down arrow, it'll move me straight down that particular column. Blank, row two. Okay, nothing in that one. Eight percent, row three. Okay, so uh, all we're hearing at the moment is the screen reader just reading the contents of the cell that I happen to be focused on. In that case, it said 8%. What it's not doing, sadly, is telling me anything useful about the nature of the row I'm in. If I try moving back left along that uh, horizontal row, it may be a bit more useful with the column information. For one slash two can, 162 cal, column three, alert from Andrea. So moving that way, uh, as I moved uh, left back along that row, it did read the column header information before the content of the cell. So if I move left again. For 100 G, 78 cal, column two. So we know that 78 calories per 100 grams of baked beans. And if I move left again. Typical values, blank, column one. Ah, didn't want to read that, okay. Energy, row two. I see. So if I go up, I'm in an energy column. If I go down this column Blank, again. row three. Fat, row four. Okay, I get to fat. So if I go right. For 100 G, 0 0.2 G, column two. For one slash two can, 0 0.4 G, column three. Alert from smashing magas. Per percent rise star, one percent. So uh, <clears throat> this table is, is half set up well for, for good screen reader use. Um, it's using probably TH elements um, for the first row of, of the content in the table. And that basically means that whenever I move into a table cell going left or right, the column header, the TH cell contents for that column will be read out before the contents of the cell. Alert so from I get Catalina that to uh, sort of two pieces of information that hook together. What they haven't done in this case is uh, made the same relationship available as I move up and down columns. So ideally what would happen is, is that the, the row, the energy, the carbohydrate, that piece of information would get read out first uh, before the contents of the table cell that told me what the actual value was. So uh, this one's a half right and, and, and half wrong example. But this is one of the reasons why actually done well, uh, accessible. HTML tables are incredibly useful. They're, they're a pretty efficient way of, of getting to information for much the same reason that they're efficient visually. Um, you can kind of look up and look down, look across, and then kind of correlate the two things in the middle to the table cell that has Alert the information from that you speed. are actually interested in. And on that note, I think I have maybe run out of immediate examples. Uh, that was mind-blowing. Um, no pun intended, but it was really eye-opening. And uh, <laughs> I've known you for donkeys, and you know I've been an accessibility bore for well over a decade. But for you know, with those people watching who'd never seen uh, somebody re using a screen reader, I'm imagining that they're amazed. Uh, so thank you, Leone. You you um, you have a consultancy company, don't you? What's it called? I do. Uh, it's called Tetra Logical, and it's a, a new company in the accessibility space. Moving away from Alert. traditional accessibility consultancy into emerging tech, things like AI, VR, XR, biometrics, uh, and also helping organizations with uh, 
creation of usable and accessible voice assistant applications and also self-sustaining accessibility functions within their companies. So rather than getting an audit when you think you're going to be sued, figuring out ways to, to make organizations get it right before they get to that point. Wicked. So if any of our audience actually felt like hurling vast sums of cash at you and bottles of tequila, <laughs> they could I'll contact the you. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, not hurling bottles of tequila at you. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> that's, 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 bad. that's particularly bad manners, especially bad manners of a blind woman, for God's sake, smashing numbers. Um, there is one way. thing. Yeah. Sorry, Bruce, just before we go, I remember I promised that I would share people what speed I typically listen to these oh, things. Oh, go on, it's your I auctioneer should, Dalek. I should say if Control I... Control 6. Oops, no, I don't want to do that. Let's... Uh... Head back up there. Slower. Fast, 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 faster. Faster, faster, faster. Okay, I'll just let it read a couple of things, but this is broadly where I listen to things at. I speak into the mailbox 415 from a column of five items. Same page links to the main navigation. Same page links to the category navigation. Same page links to the content. Same page links to the trolley. Same page links to the scoop. I'll stop it there, kids. Whoa. <laughs> Doesn't your computer get out of breath very quickly? Yes. <laughs> 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 Ms. Watson, I cannot thank you enough. Uh, sorry for the complexity starting, um, but the audience seemed to have uh, enjoyed it, and I've learned a lot. And thank you for um, your well, advice you on my side, on my site. You're absolutely welcome, and to everybody listening, um, you're more than welcome to find me on Twitter. If you have any follow-up questions, um, or ping them via Bruce and Smashing Mag, and I'll do what I can to help them. Thank Thanks, you. Leone. And next week, ladies and gentlemen, um, I must stop saying ladies and gentlemen. Next week, folks, we have a, a related webinar because I like themes. Uh, oh, okay. Mandy Michael will be uh, entertaining us from Perth, Australia, and she'll be talking about the practical benefits of semantic HTML. Uh, we've oh, seen Leone speak uh, about how semantic HTML oh, helps her. But of course, there's many more people with disabilities who are not screen reader users, <clears throat> excuse me, and there's many people in the world who are not disabled in any shape or form, but also get an advantage from semantic HTML. And Mandy will be showing you those advantages, not philosophical stuff, practical stuff. And in two weeks' time, uh, Jing, uh, Jing Hui Chen, will be giving us a talk on how using the Firefox developer tools can help you learn um, CSS grid, flexbox, and box alignment. So um, stay tuned. As usual, we'll send you out um, an email to remind you of those things. Tomorrow, there will be the recording of this webinar for those people who had to duck out early. And in a day or two, uh, maybe, maybe a few more days, actually, there will be a transcript. I'm thinking our transcribers might take a little bit longer given that Leonie's Dalek was uh, involved on the <laughs> But as you know, since, uh, since I became member of Smashing Membership, i become manager of Smashing Membership, uh, we've been having all of our webinars professionally transcribed um, because it's the right thing to do. Uh, Leonie, have a lovely evening. Um, everybody else, have a great day, whatever you're doing, and uh, see you next week. Bye-bye, folks. Thank you.